we've got a lot to talk about, from my blood work and elevated ferritin levels, to my horrible acne breakouts, to my dermatitis slash dandruff, and my thyroid, to clickbait generating eating disorders, to the deliciousness of broccoli, and a whole lot more. I'm already sweating over here, I feel like I've got a lot to get off my chest, so let's just start from the beginning. During the pandemic, I read 50 books, one of which was called The Millionaire Messenger by Brennan Machard, which explains we all have a story. And by sharing our experiences, it can prevent others from having to struggle for as long, make the same mistakes that we did, and can even ignite hope. It was after completing this book that I was inspired to create my first YouTube video, as even though it saddens me to talk about my childhood trauma, I knew by sharing my story of overcoming an abusive toxic household, moving out of my home at age 16, and legally becoming an emancipated minor, my story could bring others hope for a better future, regardless of one's situation. Now that said, I didn't know what else I wanted to do with this YouTube channel and where I wanted to take it, I just knew that through my videos, I wanted to bring more happiness and motivation for people to live out their best lives. After initially posting random videos, one day I decided to post a what I eat in a day video, as a lot of these kinds of videos were popping up on my YouTube feed, and I had so much fun watching them, as I genuinely just like to see what other people are eating to optimize their health, and so I decided I was gonna make one of these videos too. However, I am a minimalist. I like keeping my wardrobe simple, my cabinets organized, I don't like clutter or having things in my home that I'm not using. I know I got a lot of books behind me, this is just a set, okay? Plus rating is great, but I opt for things and experiences that I believe add value to my life, and I'm more of a quality over quantity kind of person. And this all applies to my diet as well. I am very intentional with my choices, and I keep my diet simple to streamline the eating process, so that way I can do other things in the day other than just worry about food. I'm not someone who tries to eat any particular diet. I never tried to eat a carnivore diet. I was just simply looking at foods and saying, okay, what meals could I make that have a lot of protein, healthy fats, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients? What foods are easy to make, cost-effective, taste yummy, and make me feel great? And it just so happens, meat, fish, eggs, and dairy hit all of those buckets, though I promise you, if hot Cheetos and donuts hit those categories, I'd be eating that. Now once I figured out a diet of meat, fish, eggs, and dairy could give me all that I needed, and I started eating this carnivore-ish diet, I immediately saw my acne disappear, my long-term knee pain heal, my sugar cravings vanish, my period became regular for the first time in my whole life, and I was no longer getting sick multiple times a year. However, I also started having this itching and burning on the back of my head. And we'll talk more on this later, but my head started itching when I did start eating a high-fat, low-carb, animal-based diet. Also, I began eating this way during COVID, and I was very stressed during this time. We had a lot going on in our personal life, so either it was one or the other, but something along the lines of stress stimulated an itchy head. So anyway, I didn't know I was eating a carnivore diet. I didn't watch carnivore content. I was just eating the foods that on paper logically made sense to me in my minimalist life. And I was then inspired to make a what I eat in a day video. Now I thought it would be pretty boring since the majority of my diet is meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. Though to my surprise, this was very abnormal and the video ended up going viral, getting over half a million views. And I started receiving so many questions in the comment section like, are you allowed to have seasonings? Aren't you nervous about cancer with all that meat? Do you ever miss having pizza? With all that saturated fat, aren't you afraid you're gonna get heart disease? How did you stop having sugar cravings? And so I started making videos, answering people's questions, and I began to do more research on this whole carnivore diet thing, and I was immediately blown away seeing people's testimonials of how they overcame Lyme's disease, reversed their diabetes, 
healed their thyroid, put their Hashimoto's disease in remission, and I was like, oh my gosh, more people need to know about this. And so I began to bring on different guests to share their experiences and bringing on more doctors to explain more of like the medical questions, cholesterol, heart attack, heart disease, things like that. I got my certification in keto nutrition and also became certified as a health and life coach. And I started seeing how it's much harder for people to be happy if they're not truly healthy. And I'm so passionate about bringing people joy because through my experiences as a child and just having a you know more miserably sad, hopeless kind of outlook on life at times, I was very fortunate to have some really good people and guardian angels come into my life who brought me the stability, balance, and love that I needed. And so I always said when I was a kid, when I grew up, I wanna give back and be that guardian angel for someone else. I wanna bring more stability and hope and peace to others. So this whole YouTube channel's really about bringing people more happiness, though again, people can reach elevated levels of wholeness and abundance when they're healthy. So that's why these videos focus on nutrition, sleep, and body movement, because if I can inspire people to make even just a couple small changes that improve their health and they therefore become happier, then I'm very happy. Alright, get it together, stay focused. So three-ish years ago, I was making quote quote carnivore content as I was eating like the Kelly Hogan, Laura Spath kind of carnivore diet, where back then, if you had seasonings and they didn't cause you any issues, go for it. If you had coffee and it doesn't bother you, sweet, I'm rooting for you. If you like mustard on your burger patty, cool, whatever, it's no big deal. However, gradually the carnivore diet started becoming more popular. And over the years, more people started creating videos saying things like, if you're not doing carnivore diet perfectly, then you ain't doing carnivore right, and you can't say that you're carnivore. Hey, dairy, that doesn't count. Coffee, what, forget about it. You flush that coffee down the toilet. You wanna put seasonings on your steak? What are you, a vegan or something? Don't even look at a plant. And I was getting blown up in the comment section every time I'd squeeze lemon on my sardines. And as I would do more interviews with guests, they would say things to me off camera, like, this is just getting a little bit ridiculous, this whole carnivore policeness thing. They would say, Lily, I will just film my food and then turn off the camera and stop recording and then add my seasonings and my hot sauce to my meats. And I was like, oh, so you hide and stuff. Influencers would say, if people ask, I'll say, yes, I have coffee, but otherwise I'm not gonna show and like highlight that I have coffee in my day. I just watched an Instagram reel this morning where someone was like, for the last X number of years, I've been eating mostly red meat and animal products. And I was like, mostly, since when? You would have said only if it was only, as you've said this in the past. So what is it now that you're eating? You know, why aren't you showing people? There should be nothing to hide. I just started seeing influencers try to one up the other as to who could be the most carnivore. Like, I'm so carnivore, I'll eat my meats raw. And it just started turning into like a carnivore cult where people were more focused on being strict rather than on being healthy. And granted, some people may need to be more strict to be healthy, but I'm talking people like me who don't have any major autoimmune condition, and yet for them, the thought of eating like a carrot stick made them feel like they're either lying to the public, they're going to lose followers, they're gonna ruin their image, they're going to lose their identity. Also, I had looked up to certain influencers and certain doctors, and then once I got to speak with them one-on-one, -on -one, it was kind of like a Wizard of Oz moment where I pulled back the curtain and I was like, oh, you're just a human. You're not this benevolent, all-knowing being. In fact, they cuss, they gossip, they say mean things, they don't have all the answers to my questions, and I'll be the first to admit I am not perfect, I have my flaws, including a flaw being that I used to watch videos and think, well, they're speaking with so much confidence that surely what they're saying must be true. And then I'd go and you know, fact check them and I'd be like, oh, hey, well, you know, some things kind of slip through the cracks sometimes. I just really don't like the hiding and like the secrets. I mean, this is not to say that people are like full-blown vegans off camera or anything like that, but like 
who cares if you have a little bit of seasonings or a little bit of something, but when you hide and you don't show it, it creates a false reality for people where then I have clients one-on-one -on -one who are genuinely concerned that if they have a cucumber, then it's like game over and they're nervous to have something else because they think they're going to be considered unhealthy. I have clients who apologize to me saying, I'm sorry I had coffee, I know I shouldn't have. And I'm like, what? Who said you couldn't have coffee? I don't care if when you have coffee, does it cause you some sort of negative response? I mean, if there's one general consensus among the people who I've interviewed, it's avoid eating processed junk foods as much as possible and stick to eating real whole single ingredient foods. Though if there's a single ingredient food that causes you some sort of negative response, then I wouldn't have it. For example, I think eggs are incredibly nutritious. And if you can tolerate eggs, I'd do it. Though there was a period in time where I felt eggs were causing my head to be more itchy and have more dandruff, and so I didn't eat eggs. Similarly, my husband, if he has some oregano seasoning, oregano seasoning of all things, he'll have more heart palpitations and he'll have more headaches and feel nauseous and just doesn't feel good from just a little bit of oregano seasoning. Point is, eat single ingredient whole foods, and if you notice certain ones cause you an issue, then I wouldn't have them. This is the beauty of a carnivore diet, a true no plants carnivore diet, as when you eliminate a ton of variables and go very basic with your diet, then when you reintroduce something like condiments or coffee or celery, then it's easier to identify which foods may be causing you an issue. Anyway, all of that said, when I first started on YouTube, I was eating a carnivore-ish diet, meat plus or minus seasonings, condiments, stevia, little things, and I quickly realized I should avoid using the word carnivore to describe how I eat, as I do have little things, but then also I realized I was under eating, and when I just eat tons of meat and fat, I can't eat enough, and so I found that if I have a little bit of carbohydrate, it actually stimulates me to keep eating and to not under eat. So as of August 2021, I started incorporating a serving of fruit, which not only helped me from under eating, but also improved my sleep. As I started noticing when I was doing more strict carnivore that I was waking up like two hours before my alarm would go off. I also started having more eye twitching from not holding onto my electrolytes. And I was also noticing my performance in the gym was getting slowly not as optimal. And I, when I incorporated a little bit more carbohydrates, I was able to push it more in the gym and have more strength. So October 13th, 2021, so two and a half years ago, I posted a video with the 10 reasons why I don't eat a carnivore diet, which I watched that video back this week and I still agree with you know, what I said back then. I thought it was pretty spot on. Now, all that said, I was still eating a fairly carnivore-ish diet. So essentially from August 2021 to August 2023, I had mainly just been eating meat, fish, dairy, and a piece of fruit. Keep in mind, this whole time my scalp has still been itchy, and because it's itchy, then when I scratch it, things will flake off. So now it's more like dandruff, and then when it's more dandruffy, then it stresses me out, and then I have more like psoriasis or kind of like dermatitis, so that's kind of where my scalp was at at this point, and I got my blood work done in August 2023. My blood work showed that my ferritin levels were elevated, which ferritin is the storage form of iron, so slightly high in iron, and my copper was a little bit on the lower end, and my thyroid, while my thyroid numbers were still in range, my thyroid still wasn't as optimal as it could be. And having dry skin can be a sign that someone has maybe some thyroid issues going on. I went over my lab work with Dr. Sabrina Salt, and she had said that I may benefit by having a little bit of broccoli, which I had randomly would have like grilled onions or some carrots maybe here or there. But for the most part over the last like three-ish years, I really didn't have any vegetables because, well, I always remembered them not tasting very great. They're also low in calories and low in nutrients. And to me, it just seemed like kind of a nuisance. Vegetables do have some nutritional value, just not as much as like we've always been told that like vegetables are like nutrient powerhouses. Yeah, not, not really. Anyway, so in September 2023, I bought broccoli and holy smokes, it was so delicious. I was like, wow, since when did broccoli ever taste this good? My body must have been missing something that I wasn't getting because this broccoli, I'm telling you, it was more delicious than bacon. After we went through the bag of broccoli, we didn't actually continue to buy it. No good reason as to why we didn't keep buying it. We just didn't. Then a few months later, so December 2023, we were visiting family for the holidays and they had Brussels sprouts and broccoli. And so we had it and again, mm, so tasty. 
Now at this point, my feathers were so ruffled about the whole scratchy, itchy head, dandruffy, psoriasis sissy scalp situation, and I'm telling you, I tried everything. I wrote a whole list down just so I wouldn't miss any of the things that I've tried. I've tried no processed foods, no fruits, no vegetables, no seasonings, no condiments, super strict carnivore, no dairy, no eggs. I've tried buying a hundred dollar silk pillowcase. I've tried new laundry detergent, a shower filter. I've tried washing my hair with egg yolks, washing my hair with apple cider vinegar, washing my hair with tallow, not washing my hair at all. I currently wash my hair just one time a week. I've tried putting coconut oil in my hair. I've tried castor oil. I've tried supplementing with vitamin B1 colostrum, iodine, selenium, copper. So I have, I've tried a lot that come the end of December, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to eliminate dairy yet again, because I was like, you know, it might be milk. And so I gave it a try again, no dairy for two months. And again, I still didn't see any improvement whatsoever with my scalp. Then we got Bryce's blood work done and his blood panel also showed that his ferritin was slightly elevated. So his storage form of iron was a little bit high and also similar to me, his copper was a little bit low. So to help bring our iron levels lower, we could either donate blood, have more copper, as copper can help metabolize iron, or have less foods high in iron, aka eat less red meat. So we decided to try all three. Now we haven't donated blood yet, but we did start supplementing with copper and having less red meat. Now that doesn't mean no red meat, we still have red meat, we just don't have it every single day, multiple times a day. And so instead of beef, we've been having more turkey, chicken, salmon, cod, mahi-mahi, oysters, and sardines. I know a lot of people have been wondering why I've been eating more turkey. This is why. I definitely prefer the taste of ground beef over ground turkey, but we'll see what happens with my iron. And because we're having more meats that have very high protein, they're very lean, and they don't have a lot of fat, we have to add in the energy calories from either more fats or carbs. And because Bryce and I at that point had CGMs and we wanted to see how our blood sugars would respond to rice and potatoes. And I, you know, I've been trying to heal my scalp and I started thinking, well, maybe the scalp thing is going on because I have too much iron or too much saturated fat as both of those supposedly can create more inflammation. And then also I've been doing a lower carb diet for over three and a half years and being in a low carb state can be a form of stress on the body. And as someone who's younger, metabolically healthy, I'm very active, maybe I've been too low carb for too long and I'm putting more stress on my body, also contributing to the scalp thing since the scalp situation all started back when the COVID thing happened and I started eating lower carb, high fat. Moral of the story is I decided I am going to try doing a higher carb diet approach. And I started having 150 to 200 grams of carbs a day. Also, I do talk about this all in my Instagram story. I mentioned this like months ago. So if you want more like up to date and even I show like what I'm eating in a day, I do a lot of that through Instagram stories. So I'll see you over on the gram. Anyway, my carbs were coming from the two cups of raw milk, the one cup of yogurt, and the one piece of fruit that I normally have, plus now another piece of fruit, potatoes, and white rice. Now initially doing this 150 to 200 gram carb approach was fine initially. My skin stayed clear, my scalp didn't get any worse, and in fact my strength in the gym, I definitely got a little bit stronger. The only two complaints I had from the beginning was that I felt hungry all the time, and then also my sleep. While my sleep didn't get worse per se, I still slept, but I would wake up and I'd feel so exhausted as if I didn't sleep, and I just felt like I got hit over the head with a sack of potatoes when I'd wake up and I thought okay well like maybe I just need to like have breakfast and get my day going and then I'll feel better but it usually took about like three hours of my morning before I finally felt like more alert otherwise I was just like very much I felt kind of hungover. I just woke up feeling very exhausted. So the first couple weeks were okay, but then things got ugly and my skin got so bad. I looked like I was a teenager again. I don't usually wear foundation, but I had to cake on the makeup for these YouTube videos because my acne was so bad. Then I was 10 days late on my menstrual cycle and I was like cry and super mood swingy and I cried for three days in a row and Bryce was like, what's wrong with you? And then I was really bloated and my abs were disappearing and I was like, um, I'm not about it. 
And I recognize when you reintroduce foods for the first time, initially the body may have some sort of reaction as it's just not used to having these things. And maybe my menstrual cycle would have regulated over time. However, I had done a no processed junk food only eating real whole foods, but a higher carb approach kind of diet before, and my menstrual cycle did not regulate. I had an irregular reproductive area my whole life until I did a high fat, low carb approach. I'm seeing now that I forgot to mention, I did this 150 to 200 gram approach for about six weeks. The first couple weeks were okay, and then slowly things just kept getting worse and worse. More acne, irritability, mood swings, I was crying more. Not that I gained fat per se, but I was holding on to more water weight. So I was getting more puffy in my face, in my arms, and in my stomach area where I could just see my body composition changing. Like I said, I was hungry all the time, more bloating, more gas, just not sleeping as great. And so I didn't have a set time limit for how long I was going to do this for, as long as my scalp was healing, which my scalp actually, to my surprise, never got worse, but with all the other things, it just wasn't worth it. I think you and I both know where this story's headed. Firstly, I just really can't stand the acne, so I stopped having as many carbs. Also, I think my acne improved because, well, summer came early for us here in Missouri, so I've been laying out and tanning more in the sun, and I think that's helped. And then also, I've been using a red light face mask, which this isn't just for people with, like, acne. It can help with fine lines, wrinkles, and blemishes. Also, with me now laying out in the sun, this face mask should help me with keeping my skin looking young and not, you know getting damaged by the sun as much. I got this face mask from Bond Charge. I just wear it for 10 minutes a day. I can still be doing my work, going on my laptop, watching TV, and be able to get like two birds, one stone done, making my skin look younger, and also get my work done at the same time. I know it looks a little silly wearing the mask, but I do really recommend it. And I'll leave a link in the video description if you wanna check it out. You can also get 15% off using code Lily on all of Bond Charge's products almost forgot with the vegetables. So in the beginning, when I first started trying like broccoli and Brussels sprouts, they were really tasty. But the more and more I continued to eat them, the less tasty they were. And with the 150 to 200 grams of carbs a day, I was so bloated. I looked like I was pregnant. Bryce would be laughing at me with my little food baby. I was farting up a storm. I was pooping four to five times a day. Pooping became my part-time job. Plus, Bryce does all of the cooking, bless his soul. And he was, he used to spend like two minutes making some ground beef and then boom, we would eat. And then now he was spending like 30 minutes to boil the rice and to make the broccoli and to chop up the onions and to have the avocado. He was spending so much of his day in the kitchen cooking and we do clean together. And we were cleaning all these different pots and pans and knives and unloading the dishwasher all the time to me. It's just not worth the time investment when I can just eat like a bowl of beef. Yeah, so I've pretty much gone back to what I've been eating for the last couple of years, which is a carnivore-ish diet. I do have seasonings, mustard, stevia, little things. We can call it an animal-based diet, though I really try not to label my diet as I'm not trying to be animal-based, I'm not trying to be low-carb, I'm trying to be healthy. My animal-based diet for years was meat, fish, dairy, and a piece of fruit. So about 140 to 150 grams of protein, 140 to 150 grams of fat, and about 60 carbs. The carbs coming from two cups of milk, one cup of yogurt, and a piece of fruit each day. Like I said, I'm pretty much going back to that with a few little exceptions. And of course, things can always change, but as of lately, I've been having still less red meat. I still have beef every day, I just don't have it every single day, multiple times a day. And instead, I still have been having more turkey, more fish, more chicken, and then adding the healthy fats on top. I've also incorporated eggs, which makes me so happy because for years I stopped having eggs because at one point I think I was overdoing it and I was having like six to eight eggs a day and they were irritating my scalp, but I think my body just kind of needed a break from eggs and not have as many eggs. And so at this point I've been having two eggs a day. I've been doing it for about three months now and I haven't had any major issues with it or my scalp doesn't look any worse. So I'm super happy about it because I love eggs. 
And then lately I've also been incorporating another piece of fruit, so two total servings of fruit a day, because I wore a CGM for a month. And when I was eating my animal-based 60 grams of carbs a day or less diet, my blood sugars were going too low at night. And I don't wear a sleep ring, but my husband does, and so he's been tracking his sleep. And when he did zero carb carnivore, his sleep got really bad, and his heart rate variability was the worst it's ever been. He's been tracking his sleep for five years, and just when he did zero carb, his sleep got really bad and for me when I wore the CGM it was also showing that my blood sugars were going too low and this could be impacting my sleep. I found by just having a little bit more carbs so I had you know one more serving of fruit then my blood sugars stayed stable throughout the night. And the last change going forth was in the past I did randomly have vegetables here or there but just now so I think I'm more open-minded to really having like some grilled onions or broccoli or a potato or something random when I feel like it or when it sounds like it tastes good. I mean I definitely don't want to do it every day because the bloating and the gas and I just don't feel my best having vegetables all the time. I still haven't figured out this whole scalp thing completely. I do think it's been seeing some progress actually. Of course I should just go to a dermatologist and see if they have any suggestions. The reason I haven't seen a dermatologist yet is because I just assume they're going to offer like medications and more of a band-aid approach and I would rather get to like the root cause rather than have to take like steroid drops or medications for the back of my scalp for the rest of my life. I've also been reading this book, You Are the Placebo, and every time I read it, it just gives me more hope and makes me feel more relaxed because I really think that this is starting to turn more into like stress psoriasis and maybe more attributed to me being more like go, 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 anxious-minded person. And so I've been trying to breathe more, calm down, take a day off. So we've been taking one day off a week, which has been really nice and I think very beneficial for my health. Yeah, just been trying to calm down more as I do think this is more so related to stress. Bryce and I will be making a what we eat in a day updated video here soon. So if that interests you, make sure to subscribe or just remember off the top of your head to come back. I hope you guys have a happy day. Thank you for all of your support over the years and I'll see you in the next one.